Hey, what's going on everyone? Diptesh here, back with another video. Now, you've already read the title of this video, so if you want to jump straight to the tutorial, go to this timestamp and you can continue watching. But I have something important to say those people who are planning to purchase high-end gaming laptops in the future. But before that, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn notifications. Also, join our Telegram community. Link is down in the description. All right, with that said, let's get started. So recently, due to the aggressive sales of the HP Omen 16 with the Ryzen 7 6800H and RTX 3070 Ti, a lot of people actually have purchased this laptop. And turns out, what I feel like is most of these people are actually beginners or like this is their first gaming laptops and they have ended up buying a super high-end gaming laptop. That, that's what I understand from their comments under my YouTube videos or in my Telegram community. They are concerned about various things like thermals, battery life, etc. Guys, I understand all of your concerns but the thing is you guys have purchased a super high-end gaming laptop without knowing the consequences of such machines or like kind of like the side effect of having such high-end components. You see, it's kind of like upgrading from a low-end or a mid-range smartphone to an ultra-high-end flagship smartphone. You think upgrading to an ultra-high-end flagship will make your life great. But the thing is, it is not 100% great. Your new smartphone, your ultra-high-end flagship will be faster, it will be smoother. But at the same time, it's most likely to be hotter and also have less battery life. I can also give you the same analogy between a normal regular day-to-day -day car compared to a super you know, sports car or something like that, where you have different pros and cons of both the machines. Okay, so my point is when you're buying such a top-of-the-line gaming laptop, there is bound to be consequences. You are just packing a lot of performance into a small form factor. You just cannot expect to have high-end performance all the time at the same time expecting to have low thermals. That is just not going to happen. You just cannot expect to have the maximum performance all the time along with low temperatures. And also it's just the physical properties of this AMD Ryzen APUs uh, that makes these like hotter. Why? Because these APUs are actually much tinier and much denser than Intel CPUs. So even though AMD APUs are like consuming less power, they are more efficient, they are actually harder to cool they are not able to as effectively spread the heat as Intel CPUs, at least the new Intel CPUs, okay? Anyways, all that aside, what I mean to say is that if you have a high-end components like this, you are going to have high temperatures. But are there ways to optimize the system to balance the, you know, the ratio of performance, thermals, and fan noise? Definitely. In fact, I highly recommend all gaming laptop buyers to educate yourself to optimize your systems, whether it is Intel, AMD, or NVIDIA. So let's talk about these methods for Intel laptop owners. I have already made undervolting tutorial using Throttle Stop. Uh, check out the link in the cards. It's a, it's a good tutorial. Intel laptops are highly recommend you guys to undervolt your Intel laptops. Highly, highly recommended. So in this video, we'll talk about how you can optimize your AMD system for various scenarios and use cases using something known as AMD APU Tuning Utility. Now, I don't earn enough from this channel to afford high-end gaming laptops to test AATU on those. So, in this video, we'll talk about AATU and see the benefits of AATU on the HP Pavilion Gaming 15 with the Ryzen 5 4600H. I am testing this laptop under super hot 38 degrees centigrade room temperature using automatic fan modes because this laptop doesn't even have maximum fan mode or any fan controls as such. So this is literally the worst case scenario for thermals. And so this laptop, the HP Pavilion Gaming 15, is a good candidate to show off the benefits of ATU. Okay, so let's get started. First, let's see how this laptop performs at its default power configuration. Once again, these tests are with automatic fan mode, which in HP laptops is not aggressive at all. So this is Cinemage R23 multi-core single loop performance. More than the score, focus on the thermals and the clock speeds. We peaked at 57 watts and maintained an average of 48 watts throughout the test. This resulted in an average clock speed of 3.8 GHz and an average temperature of 89.6 degrees centigrade with a high of almost 94 degrees centigrade. Do note, I have had much better thermals before. This laptop hasn't been cleaned or rebased in a long time. Plus, it's peak summer now. Anyways, let's move on to the much more demanding 10 minutes thermal throttling test. And here, just under 2 minutes into the test, and we have already hit 95 degrees centigrade. And from now on, the laptop will slowly try to throttle 
and just 5 minutes into the test, we have already hit 99 degrees centigrade on the CPU package and now it is definitely trying to throttle. Fast forward to the end and the score is actually still pretty good but we hit a maximum temperature of 99.1 degrees centigrade and average almost 94 degrees centigrade. We also maintain an average package power of 45 watts with an average all core clock of 3.75 gigahertz. Okay, now we have a baseline, but before that, I have something to say you. I have used Ryzen controller and AATU on several Ryzen laptops, HP, Acer, Dell, uh, Lenovo as well, MSI as well. So I know that this thing works and this thing works great and I have never faced any issues. But I know some or the other will come in the comment section and say, hey, this is not working, that is not working. So before anything as such happens, let me tell you, I am not responsible for whatever happens to your system. If you wish to try this, you can try. If you don't wish to try, you don't try. Okay, I am not responsible for whatever happens to your system. And also, if you are super paranoid and scared to use this, let me recommend you to just take a simple system image backup so that you can restore it if something happens. Like, I don't know, nothing will happen, but still I'm saying this just, just for a disclaimer. If something happens, you can restore uh, to, uh, to the previous system image. I'll link a tutorial up so that you can create a system image backup. It is super easy so that you can restore it, okay? Okay, after downloading AATU, unzip it and launch the executable. Now there are various sections in AATU. The first section is called Project Snowdrop, which basically gives you three presets for your AMD APU. So let's try a couple of them. Battery saver mode is really laser focused for battery saving, locking the APU to around five watts, just enough for some web browsing or light office work. The balance profile is pretty good. It keeps the TDP around 45 to 47 watt range. And generally this results in good thermals and performance. But like I said earlier, today is super hot and even the balance profile is not enough to tame the thermals. We average around 90 degrees centigrade with a peak of 94 degrees centigrade. Now let's not even bother testing performance mode today. Now this is the main part of AATU, the custom preset. You can customize and tweak all the various metrics to optimize your APU for various use cases. For example, let's say you are gaming and the CPU is getting too hot. In such a case, you can simply cap your CPU to whatever temperature you feel like. For example, 80 degrees centigrade is a reasonable limit. So let's apply it. And here you can see that we are now throttling at 80 degrees centigrade. And the CPU is also automatically adapting to it by lowering the CPU package power and thereby the clock speed as well. Now this was a pretty simple fix. However, there is a much better method and that is to manually lock your CPU TDP to a reasonable level, especially when you are gaming and high graphic settings. Let me take a minute to explain you this. See, when you are gaming at high graphic settings or high resolution, more often than not, it's the GPU that matters much more than the CPU. This is called a GPU bottleneck situation or a GPU bound situation. Now, normally your laptop has a power budget that it shares between the CPU and the GPU. And so in these high graphical fidelity situations where you are GPU bound, it is better to manually lock your CPU TDP to a low enough level such that it frees up enough power for your GPU to utilize. So GPU will be able to use that power and boost higher and giving you effectively higher FPS in many situations. This is very beneficial to laptops that have something like Nvidia's Dynamic Boost. Check out the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark on the Legion 5 Pro at 1440p Ultra settings. When locking the CPU to around 25 watts or so, we are able to get higher FPS compared to the stock behavior simply because in this GPU bound game, the GPU is able to utilize more power and boost higher when the CPU is locked to a low TDP of around 25 watts or so. And this also dramatically lowers the temperatures of the CPU and also dramatically lowers the overall thermal load on the entire system. Because remember, the CPU gets much hotter than the GPU at the same TDP or the same power level. A 50 watt on the CPU can easily cause it to reach like 85, 90 degrees centigrade, whereas a 50 watt on the GPU is like nothing. So if you are reducing the thermal capacity, thermal load on the CPU, it lowers the entire thermal load on the heatsink fan assembly by a great deal. 
also giving you more FPS in this high GPU bound situations. So lock the CPU to a reasonable power limit. I normally recommend anything between 27 to 35 watts when gaming, especially at high graphical fidelity. You can then save your settings to a preset so that you can apply it anytime you wish. Similarly, you can create other presets for other use cases like I'm creating one for rendering. Honestly, this is far better than various laptop control center softwares that the OEMs pack in. Alright, now let's come to the best part of this AMD APU tuning utility. And it's a new one for AMD laptop APUs. That's the ability to undervolt them. I have been recommending undervolting your Intel CPUs for a long time. I cannot personally imagine using an Intel laptop without undervolting it. Undervolting is such a critical and amazing feature. It lowers your thermals, it increases your performance, it increases the longevity of your CPU or your GPU, whatever you under decide to undervolt. And I highly recommend that and Intel CPUs have supported undervolting since a really long time. I have a tutorial for that on my channel, go check it out. I have undervolted my Helios 3 2018 and it's been 5 years. I undervolted it on day 1 of purchase and it's been like that for the last 5 years. Undervolting is seriously amazing. But however, undervolting is not officially supported on AMD laptop APUs. But with ATU now, you can actually undervolt quite a few of the APUs. So mileage may vary for you. But I am quite able to effectively undervolt my HP Pavilion Gaming Routine with the Ryzen 5 4600H and it undervolts quite effectively. So let's take a look at that. So first let's create a default preset and these are the default preset for my device. I know maximum 57 watt TDP and the 100 degree centigrade is the default throttling point for this laptop. Now come to the clock control section and select the all core curve optimizer option. Start with minus 10 then keep decreasing by minus 5 until you start crashing which will indicate instability and that way you will be able to reach an optimal value for your particular laptop. So let's start with negative 10. Now notice our package power has already lowered from 57 watts which is the default to only 51 watts. Also notice our clock speeds which are averaging 3.95 GHz which is about 150 MHz higher than at stock. And yes, even though our system was hotter, we actually got a higher score. Again, remember, it's super hot today and I've been doing multiple tests on this laptop. Now I know my system is stable up to negative 35, so let's try that. And bam, 86, 24 points. And look at the package power. It only peaked at 47.5 watts, which is almost 10 watt lower than at stock. And also our core clock is almost 4 GHz throughout the test. However, this is not it. After testing multiple TDPs, I have found that the TDP lock to 47 watts with a negative 35 on the curve optimizer gives the best balance of performance and thermals for my system. So let's do a 10 minute Cinebench R23 multi-core run and compare its behavior with the default behavior that I showed in the beginning. And just look at the improvement. Within 2 minutes, we had hit 95 degrees centigrade on the CPU in default settings. Whereas with my optimized settings, we are now 10 degree cooler, which is fantastic because I have said multiple times already, it is 38 degree centigrade ambient temperature here and the laptop is in automatic fan mode. As the test progresses, notice how the system is not really getting hot anymore. As now it is actually able to sustain this temperature and the thermal solution is not getting overwhelmed anymore. And with 5 minutes into the test, at default settings, we are already at 99 degrees centigrade and we have definitely started to throttle. Whereas with my optimized settings, we are again 11 degrees centigrade cooler at peak and 10 degree cooler on average. This might not sound impressive to some of you, but remember at default settings, we have already started to throttle. Whereas with undervolt applied, we are still at full performance. And by the end of the test at default settings, we average 94 degrees centigrade even after throttling since the last 5 minutes. Whereas with our optimized settings, we did not even touch 90 degrees centigrade and averaged only 87 degrees centigrade which is tremendous in automatic fan mode and in this hot weather. 
We also only pulled 41 watt on average and maintained about 3.8 gigahertz all core, which is again higher than a default despite using less power. And also, we scored a bit higher as well. On a less demanding day, I have managed to hit 8858 points on this benchmark, which is probably the same as most Ryzen 5 5600 laptops. That's the power of undervolting. Finally, one thing to keep in mind is AATU settings are only temporary and you have to reapply them on every boot. And so you can set up AATU to start up when you boot up your laptop. This way, AATU is always ready to be used. So that was it for this video guys, that was it for this tutorial. I know this video was a long time coming but I was just too busy. But hopefully now you know how to use AATU at least and you will be able to better optimize your AMD systems. So hope you enjoyed this video guys. Make sure to hit like, share and definitely subscribe and also join our Telegram community, engage in tech discussions and get alerted on the best tech deals the earliest. That's it for this video guys, thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.